Welcome to Drawing with Paolo. Today we're going to draw a character on this sheet of paper right here. But first we need to go through a few tools. So we'll need our pencil, our push pencil here, mechanical pencil, love these things. Of course, our eraser, need to erase things. I love this one, push on it, comes up, tap, tap, tap. There we go. And for me, I need one more tool, of course, my glasses. <laughs> you might not need those, but I do. So we're going to draw a character here. We'll draw a centurion from Asterix and Obelix, and we'll have a, another character uh, in front of him, scaring the bejesus out of him. So let's put his head here, just a basic circle, his body shape here, a basic rectangle with a bit of a curve in the front and the back. And we'll put a, a shield in front of him like this, which is another rectangle with kind of curved top and bottom. And we can see the back of the shield here just a little bit, the curve in it. And we can make this soldier or centurion, Roman centurion, a little bit rounder. If you like, you can make him thinner. It's your drawing. You choose the way you want to illustrate him. And of course, he has this little kind of skirt at the bottom of his belt and his legs coming out in a V shape with his feet attached to them here. His heel here and the leg go back up. These guys aren't very strong, don't look very strong, they're super skinny, so we're going to need to draw these guys skinny as well, but they have big feet. So there we go, the legs are in there. I think the shield is a little low, so I'm going to erase the top line here as well. Let me get rid of these things, and uh, make that a little bit taller. I'm, I, think it's, um, I think it doesn't work, so we'll fix that. Clear out these lines here a little bit, clean that up, and then get this line out of there too, and, and make the shield a little bit taller. There we go, pull the lines up higher, and... Yeah, just like that. Closer to the shoulder. You know, he needs to protect himself, defend himself with the shield. So a nice bigger shield will make more sense. All right. So now we're going to work on his head. So we'll put an ear right here. This is his left ear and a little letter T inside that ear like we've been doing. This is the third uh, Asterix and Obelix drawing we've uh, made or to date. Um, and so all of the ears are pretty much the same like a, a C shape and with the letter T inside of it. This is his helmet and on his helmet he has uh, like a, a, a pallet in the front to protect him from the sun perhaps. Who knows, you know. I wasn't there back in those days. I don't know what those uh, pieces were for. We'll add a, a little bit of a thickness to this like this, drawing a line here. And of course how long this pallet is so we'll draw a line here at the bottom too. We'll add his eyebrows, two dark lines for eyebrows, and then we'll draw his schnoz. So he, all these characters have big noses. I guess it adds to their charm, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know what you guys think, but I would not want a nose that size. You can't get through a door if you turn your head at the same time. All right, so he's got this kind of loopy thing in the back of his helmet, probably to hang his helmet on a hook later on when he gets home. And there's this little element here that allows for that side piece to flip up or flip down. There we go. And then a circular part here with a hole in it, just like that. We could add a thickness to here at the bottom and around that piece just like this, very delicately making that line. We can recontour the ear, make it a little bit darker. I'm not going to make modifications to that shape anymore. I'm quite happy with it. And then there's the back part of his helmet just kicks out. And once again, that's kind of like a rectangle or a diamond shape now, if you look at it. Um, very simple drawing. When you look at complex shapes or a complex drawing and break them down into simplest shapes, it's very simple to see what we're making. And I'll try to uh, pinpoint those elements as we go along. So it just drew his nostril here. And we'll close his face here. That, and we'll make his uh, cheek. So his cheek will come out this way, flaring out. And we'll come and attach to his chin. And those are just two letter C's, right? You know how to draw a letter C. And of course, this is like his facial line when he smiles or frowns. In this case, he'll be frowning. He won't be too happy to see whom he's uh, being pitted against in this drawing. So there's a little circle here uh, at the side of his cap or helmet. 
put a little thickness to that, just like this. And then retrace the line all the way across and down. Another quick drawing today, something uh, fast, and so that you can learn to draw these things. Super simple cartoony character. And we'll make his uh, nose a little bit darker here and give him a frown as he's unhappy. So that's just a curved line coming from this left side all the way to the right side. And we'll curve that up a little bit more. There you go. He's like, ooh, he's not happy. So we'll, we'll give him emotion in his eyes too. And these are two reverse C's, a backward C and a little dot at the bottom, another backward C and a dot at the bottom. Just like this, watch, whoop, there you go. All right, that was simple. Then we're gonna add a few shading elements here. We should draw his neck, attach that to his body like this, a little rectangle. So he's like two lines, very simple, two lines. We'll erase this foundation line there. And we'll put a uh, arm going down this way. So, okay, arms seem complex, but essentially if we pull a line this way, and then pull, an pull another line this way with a little bit of a curve in it, we just made a forearm. It's super simple. A forearm is essentially a rectangle, like this thumb is an oval, and we put another shape in it, and then it becomes a thumb. And a fist essentially is a circle, but I'm making a whole bunch of little letter C's attached together and considering all of their four fingers. And then the fingers are like sausage shapes, you know, they're ovals, but I'm not closing them off, right? I'm leaving a little opened-ended part to them. There we go. That's maybe his palm we can see back there retrace some of these lines, make them a little bit darker, redefine the knuckles, and we'll put a sleeve fold here, so his sleeve is out here this way. It's just another oval, and on top another oval. If you imagine those shapes completely closed off, then they're very simple ovals. You can add a few folds here to the clothing, just like that. And of course, I'll give them like a kind of bracelet my bracelet is made of steel or gold, so I'll erase the lines inside there. If you want your bracelet to be made of, uh, you know, glass, then you could leave those lines inside there. Mine is made of gold, so we'll put a little bit of reflection in it, just like this at the bottom. And add some detail here to his knuckles. Redefine that. And of course, he's holding a lance. And what's a lance? It's a really long rectangle, so we'll pull a really long line and just across it, perpendicular or parallel, well, yeah, rather parallel, we'll pull, pull another line and close that shape, and there's our long rectangle for his lance. And we'll add some shading here at the bottom where his fist meets the lance. Shade that up. You can go, you know, somewhat of a distance from the hand there. And then the top will kind of taper inwards until we go to the, the point of that lance. I'm gonna make it really tiny, just so you can see how to draw it. But technically, in regular drawings of these characters, the lance is really long, or, or not the lance, but the actual spike part. And I've made it kind of wimpy. <laughs> it's a wimpy lance. Let's go with our wimpy character. He's going to be afraid of, a, of an animal here soon. So we'll draw in all those parts here. Add a bit of shading under this portion here, just like that. All right, so now we're going to add some clothing. So he's got these kind of uh, suspendery things on either side of his shoulder, like shoulder pads, but at the same time, they hold up his armor. So we'll add rectangles, three rectangles on either side. And I like to draw them individually, so they, they kind of look staggered. They don't look... If I were to draw one sing, single line across, it wouldn't look staggered so much. It looked like a rectangle with lines in it. So I'll really trace them individually so they don't look perfect. I kind of like that idea. And we'll curve the bottom part like this. We'll put a circle inside there later at the bottom. We'll curve that one. And there's my third one. And we'll erase the lines that are through there. All right. Retrace the lines we kind of damaged. <coughs> Just like this. A bit more pencil. Hmm. And let's add those circles as I was mentioning here. These are kind of like the buttony things that are holding this stuff to his armor. And we'll add some reflections here uh, in this because this he's wearing gold-plated armor. I'm guessing in my mind, I'm imagining what it could be color-wise. And we'll add some reflections in these little bits of metal here, just like this. Little zigzaggy lines, just like that. Give an impression of reflection. Maybe his face or his helmet is reflecting in there. There you go. So we'll put a pant line uh, about a, about here, like that. And then we'll uh, add a belt line, kind of like this. Ooh, make that a bit too long. Right through the shield. 
I pierce their shield with my line. We'll erase that. So remember to, remember to draw lightly. You never want to press too hard on your pencil off the bat because otherwise it's hard to adjust that later on. Uh, so here's his belt thickness. We'll add a buckle, just a square, and the belt is a rectangle or another square next to it. And to add some detail to these elements, we'll just add little circles. We'll add a circle in the buckle and one on his belt too after I redefine these lines here. So a circle here in the buckle, like that, circle, and another circle here on the belt, just like that. Super easy, right? Everything is a basic shape with some modification to the form, but everybody knows how to draw squares and circles and triangles, so that's all we're doing in this character, essentially. When you break it down to its most simplest elements, that's all they are, basic shapes. All righty. Okay, so let me give, me give you an example of that. We're going to add detail to this shield, all right? And the shield seems complex, but it really isn't if you think about it. So we'll pull a line across right underneath uh, the lines I'll redefine here for a second. Just make this a little bit darker. Okay, so inside of this shield, he's got a, a square. Uh, so we'll draw a line like this all the way across and then we'll stop short, oop, and then we'll pull down, pull across and go back down, stop short, pull across, make a square, like a half a square, and pull all the way to the other end. See, now that looks like a cool design, but all we did is made squares in squares. It's simple. And the end over here is just a circle with another circle behind it. So if you know how to draw circles in squares, hey man, you've got this gig down pat. It's in your pocket. Easy as pie. Okay, let's erase some of these foundation lines. Kind of scribbled in there. That's cool, you know, you do what you want to do. If you don't want a circular bit there to that uh, shield decor, you can change that, make that a square, not put anything at all, put a different logo. If uh, your family has a coat of arms, you can put it on there. Yeah, whatever you like. We're gonna draw these kind of winglets, little wing designs here. Kind of remind me of uh, what Asterix has on his helmet. It's kind of odd that the Romans would have wings on their shields as well, but hey, you know, why not? Why not? Circle here, circle there, and then we'll put the thickness here so it's kind of like a C shape. Whoop, see like that. C shape. All right, we'll color the back end of the shield. Push that back a little bit into the background. All right, and now we'll have to draw his boots. Well, it's not boots, he's wearing, he's kind of wearing like sandals, and so we'll have to draw each rectangle to those uh, the leather strips that keep his uh, sandals on his feet. I'm just going to add a few reflective elements here before I move down to the bottom of my drawing. And because I'm right-handed, I'm keeping his enemy till last because I'll draw him on the right side. And if I were to draw him first, then I'd be scrubbing all over him with my palm. So I'll start on the left side here of the drawing and then work my way to the right. Okay, so let's erase some of these foundation lines. And already we're half done on our drawing, moving along very swiftly. And so let's add those leg bits. We've got like a short under here. And then uh, we can kind of see underneath there a little bit. Then we, we have little rectangles. Each of these really thin rectangles is a leather loop in which he laces, or with which he laces his sandals up. So rectangle, rectangle, you know, everybody can draw rectangles. Let's do these rectangles, draw these along. There you go, easy squeezy. Well, I hope everyone at home is doing well. I hope you've had an amazing week. Uh, I hope you are healthy, having fun. If you are not, I'm sincerely sorry. I really hope that you are surrounded by family and friends, getting some support, and I hope you get healthy soon. Um, and you know what's really cool is that through drawing, you can get some really cool, I mean, it's good for your health. Drawing is very good for you. It, it builds character, literally. <laughs> We're building one right now. Um, it helps with your imagination, with your creativity. I like to see drawing, you know, I'm sitting here by myself, I'm drawing. I'm very calm, no stress, and it's kind of like therapy for certain people. 
um, and it's very calming, you know. So if you're if you're you have a stressful life, um, drawing really helps out with that. I think it becomes less um, less calming when you start showing your drawings to other people. Some people find that uh, stressful to be critiqued by other people or having your drawings critiqued. But hey, don't worry about that. Whatever. If they don't like your drawing, that's their problem. You don't have to worry about that. So okay, remember this guy is kind of worried. He's scared and he's being confronted by some demonistic a animal and so he's shaking and shivering so we'll make these shiver lines right here and there and, oh just broke my lead or uh, graphite there we go add those shivering lines he's got that those beads of sweat coming out of his forehead now we're going to draw that demonic hellish animal that he's being confronted by and so we'll put him over here with a little circle and goes to his body like this and then his front paw kind of going that way and so we'll this is where his nose will be we'll draw his nose and then his bottom jaw like this his mouth is open it's going to show his massive teeth and he's got ears like this going like that and then we've got the left ear as well going like that look at that it kind of looks menacing already doesn't it <laughs> all right you guessed it this is uh, dogmatics dogmatics is another character of Asterix and Obelix, European characters. And this will be our last drawing of three of that world. I just felt like doing a triptych. And so all the fans will be satisfied. We'll have these heroes and the enemies and dogmatics here as well. I'm going to color in those ears. So it's very important that, you know, a lot of you guys are asking for drawings on my YouTube videos. You're plastering all your requests. I really appreciate the, uh, you know, the, the comments and the requests and all that. Uh, but please make sure you check out my uh, YouTube channel and look at all the videos that are there before asking for videos. Uh, it doesn't mean that because you ask for a video that I'll actually draw them. You know, there's a lot of requests. It makes no sense for me to try to draw all those things. I, I try to create one a week. Um, so, you know, I'd be here for the rest of my life <laughs> and I wouldn't finish all of the requests. But what I mean is before making a request, you know, I do take a look at them. I'm, I, I do always, you know, read your comments. Sometimes I try to interact as much as I can. Uh, but before making a request, make sure you go to my channel and see what's already there uh, because you'd be surprised how many dragon requests I've had. And I've already drawn, I think, two or three dragons. So check those out. Uh, check those videos out before asking for anything. So here's our character's open mouth with his little goatee here at the bottom. Um, and his eyes, fierce eyes. Look at this fierceness in his eyes. A little bit of a circle down here uh, in the corner to make him a pupil. And then his left eye back here. Look at that menacing, menacing character. <laughs> and we'll add a bit more hair over here. Give him that furriness. And he's going to be barking away. He's going to be barking at this Roman centurion. Now we're going to add a bit more uh, outline to his moustache. Beautiful moustache. Quite frankly, I love this character. He's very be beautiful. Whatever that accent is, horrible. I'm usually better at a UK accent. Not very good at this day, at this moment. Haven't practiced in a bit. And why the UK accent? Because this is a European character. Makes tons of sense. Anyway, let's move on. So toes to this paw. And then we'll, uh, just erase a few lines over here. And then add another leg back here. Well, a little bit shorter, right? So we want to make sure that this leg looks farther away. So we'll keep it a little bit shorter than the one in front. And we'll add little letter C's to make his toes. Long, elongated letter C's. So, here, so here's one C like that, another C like that. And there you go, you made three toes. On the bottom of his body here, his abdomen. And just add more hair detail here. He is a fuzzy animal dogmatics and his back leg which has longer toes like that 
kind of like water droplets for toes. And it will sketch that line all the way to his body like this. And then don't forget his back leg needs to be a little bit shorter because it's farther back there, right? They're not side to side, they're not stuck together. So you need to give that uh, impression of perspective. There we go. Back up, elongated C's and hey, there we go. There's his paw. So not bad. Pretty quick drawing if you have 20 minutes in your day, you have time to uh, sketch along with me and have some fun. Draw a few more characters. This adds to my collection of, I don't know now, I think I'm close to uh, 280 videos, something of that nature. Of course, there are French and English ones. Uh, if you go to my channel, you'll be able to see the different languages there, French or English. Uh, that's another thing people ask for. Hey, where's the English one of this? Well, they're mostly there. You just need to go to my channel. You'll be able to find them. I, I do make them bilingual because uh, I've got fans across the world. All right, so he's barking. And to make this look like he's barking, we're going to add these exclamation marks. Bow, bow. He's barking at this centurion, and we'll put those explosive lines around it. He's barking really loud, really loudly. And he might be, you know, kind of warning Asterix and Obelix. And we'll add the ground line here, just a basic curve. And we're nearly done. We're going to add some shadow underneath the dog here. Little dog, little puppy. I don't think he's a puppy anymore. He's got a mustache. I wonder if he shaves. All right, a little bit under the lance. And then we'll, uh, we'll add a rectangle around these characters, kind of like to put them on a background. Very simple rectangle line around there. So just like all the way up. Not, not all the way up. Uh, let's keep it a little bit shorter than the characters so they really look like they're on top of this kind of stage background thing. And then my signature, and we're done. I really hope you enjoyed this drawing today. And hey, you know, it was a pleasure for me to draw it. Thanks for spending time with me, DWP. And we'll see you next time on another episode of Drawing with Paolo.